Hello, hello, hello. My name is Mofi, and welcome to Twitch Stream Thursdays. I have Nick here with me, and today we're talking about what, Nick? Today we are talking about Docker. All right, you already got the name down. You're know, like 50% yeah. like becoming a Docker master. Um, so, I mean, last week we talked a little bit about what Docker files are, how do you write a Docker file yourself. But, I mean, I, you complained, and I heard your complaint that I didn't really show you enough example of what a Docker file um, like is about, really, like writing, how was the like a situation of writing a Docker file yourself. I just didn't want to show you an example of like an application because when you start shooting an application, it all becomes all about the application, not the Docker file. Right. But then I went home and thought about how I can actually show you what the difference it makes by writing a good Docker file. Uh, so um, if, you, if you remember, I, I did a, like a workshop few months back on like a fake like Wolfram Alpha called it Fox from Beta. Yeah. So I had like prime number generators and things like that. Um, so I'm gonna show you the first the Docker image, the, what the application does. Run run it first and show you what it does real quick. Um, so before, so let me just quickly switch to my uh, code screen. So here we are, and I have the Docker image downloaded again from the last week. We have a bunch of things, but like this is the Docker image we care for mostly, right? The Fox from Prime, and this one. And I'm gonna just basically just run this Docker image. So run this Docker image. Uh, we remember how to run things, right? So we're gonna do a dash p to give it a port, and this application runs on 8080. And I'm gonna run it on 8080, and I'm gonna give it uh, my um, prime version 002. And if I just give it, it's gonna run, and it's just running right now. Is, is Docker, okay, so I always forget, is Docker run the one that runs like three different things, or is it, so if it something else that runs? So Docker run does it multiple things if okay. it needs to, but right now, since the image is already in my system, it doesn't do anything else, it just creates and okay. starts it. Create and start. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna quickly just uh, open up a side uh, so that we can make some curl commands to this particular URL. So I'm gonna make a curl to uh, localhost 8080 slash prime and give it a number, let's say 10. Ooh. So what is this doing? Quick, hold on, let me figure it out. Why is not page not, oh, 8080. That's what I did. Mm, interesting. So again, I'm, I want to just like, because this, this server is running on port 8080, let me check on my browser real quick and see if that is actually still working. Localhost 8080, prime 10. Okay, that is not found, interesting. Let me just see what actual port it act listens on. To make sure, so I'm just looking through the source code to see what port I listen on. Um, so the path I'm listening on is primes, and I was ah. the classic. Uh, so yeah, that does work. So um, well, usually uh, not this, not this. Okay, Carl, it has to be primes. If I do this, it returns me a bunch of primes. I need primes that are smaller than this number, and they're actually pretty performant. I can do 100, I can do 1,000. You know, it's written in Go, works pretty well, super fast. Cool, cool. So the application is running. You can see what it does, right? Now, let's then start looking at, um, and I'm going to pretty much uh, close this side window, do a quick clear. So the branch I'm on right now is called really, really, really bad Docker. Uh, okay. And I'm going to try, start building and then show you what the doc, because this, this will take a while to build. So I'm going to do a quick uh, CD into uh, source, then uh, prime, and I'm in this folder. It has a Docker file. You can look at the Docker file real quick, but we're going to read this Docker file very carefully in a second. But this is the Docker file, standard stuff. It has a base. It does a bunch of things, some run commands, and blah, blah, blah. And, it, and at the end, it starts the app. So standard things, but let's just build it real quick. Um, Build. I'm gonna give you a tag. Call it Mofi Codes. Um, I'm gonna call it uh, Fox Fram Prime, and gonna give it a tag. I'm gonna call it RRBD. Really, really bad Docker, right? Um, well, it's, it's three R's. Really, really, really bad Docker. <laughs> and I'm gonna start building it. And the reason I started building this before is because it's actually downloads lots of things. I'm gonna let it finish. But in the meantime, let's take a look at what this Docker file is doing. Okay. Um, so we start from Ubuntu Xenial. It's basically Ubuntu 18.4. That's the tag. That's the base image I'm starting with. Like any Linux distribution, first thing I do, I update and upgrade because if anything is missing, I want to get them uh, as soon as possible. Then there, these are a bunch of things I need to be able to compile Go code. 
uh, wget to be able to download uh, the go binaries to install go in the uh, ubuntu distribution i need git because go uses git underneath to like pull uh, different things it needs um okay so last time you told me you need to run or it's recommended to run right. everything in one line. So is that why this is really, really bad, Doctor? Are you gonna actually show me yes, exactly. why? Yeah, that I'm gonna show you the this? difference between okay. this and a different version yeah, of it in a second. Last time I was really, uh, right, really right, sad right. I can Right, now you're gonna see everything. So, right. so every time, again, another thing you're gonna notice, if I quickly go back here, again, it's printing a bunch of things, but uh, if we quickly scroll up, and you're gonna see that each time any of the commands run, it actually counts it as like step two of 22. That means wow. this Docker image, has 22 layers, okay. right? Um, again, let's go back and keep reading. So I'm installing a bunch of things. Each of them are separately installed. I'm installing wget, build as shell CS certificates, git. Then I'm going and downloading the Docker binaries. Then I'm extracting the Docker binaries, unzipping them, putting them into my user local go, then removing the file I downloaded. Because again, I don't want to have the file that I downloaded. I just want to have the binaries installed in the right place. Okay. Setting my go root, creating a go folder, um, setting go path, setting my path, Starting going to the source directory, copying my things, doing a go mod download, and then doing a go build. So right, right here in this copy, you have like three different things. So, on, so, what's happening so copy basically takes an array of things you have to copy and a final destination. Okay. So go mod and go sum. It's basically the same idea when you want to do a node go docker. You want to copy the package JSON first, install everything you need to do with npm, then you want to copy your source code. Okay. Uh, Can you copy like like, so can you do multiple copies to different places in one command? Like, is that a thing you do? Not the same command. It could actually, I, it could make a run to do something like that, but copy is basically a pretty fine command that copies something from your host to the container. Is, is that normally something that you were concerned about, like, layer-wise, or? Yes, okay. very much so. Because if I were to copy, again, when I do this copy, this also copies everything to everything, right? But I don't do it before because the GoMod download, I, I kind of consider it kind of an NPM install of okay. my Go project. Uh, because my code usually wouldn't change much, would change much faster than my imports. So uh, GoMod and GoSum I need before so that when I do the GoMod download and then I code changes, I, I want to keep my layers as non-changing as possible. Probably a really, 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 really bad version of Docker would do this all the way in the top of the Docker file. That means anytime my code changes, all the future layers would be very slow to change as well. Okay, that, but, makes, that makes a lot of sense. Right, but I, I again, even, even in my really, really, really bad Docker, I actually put it kind of in the lower state, which is a good thing to do. So this is not the bad part of it. I'm pretty sure I do this in like my first step. Right, so, so that's, that's not good. Because <laughs> as, if you change one word in inter code, the checksum is no longer matches, and Docker will have to then rebuild all the future steps. Gotcha. So like this step, if you have line 32 in your code, as lower as you can put it without breaking your Docker file, you want to have it as lower as you can. Okay. In the meantime, let's go back and see we're on, we're still building away and it's doing a bunch of things. And it's finally done, right? It's it's done, it finished eight, uh, step 22. And if I do a Docker images, I'll see this Docker uh, Fox Prime, Prime with this tag is actually available. Let's try running it, right? Let's see if it's still. So wait, quick question: If if we were to build this again, would it go faster? Because it will. It like... will be almost real time because there's not no more differences. Okay, oh, yeah, let's do that real quick. Okay. Uh, okay. Docker build. Um, bang, done. Okay. Because everything is cached. Okay. Right. Uh, same idea. I think Docker image repositories does the same exact thing. If I push this image up first, first time upload is gonna take like days. Uh, be, and, but like next time you upload, uh, it's gonna be super fast because the image repository already have all the layers. Okay. That's why you don't want to layers to change either because if I just right. put the copy up all the way in the up, it, has to it, it couldn't cache everything. It'll, because um, yeah, because right now my builds take forever because I think you know I'm doing that copy and then it obviously everything changes. Right. So then. So for example, another thing is at 19, but the rest of the things are like go things like for example it's go like build fast, yeah. and go build is extremely fast. Exposing port is super fast and just like final stuff is extremely yeah. easy. So we're seeing that. So let's run this real quick. Um, I think already I've, I've gotten a, a few snippets that are, are definitely gonna help me out. Right, and I hopefully towards the by the end of this you're gonna just like building amazing Docker images left and right. Um, so you're gonna have to change the version. Uh, so this, I just run this, and it's running, and I'm gonna just quickly open up this, and I'm gonna make a curl to 
uh, localhost, same exact thing, and still works. My application didn't break or anything. Then my, if my application works, why am I calling it a bad Docker? Um, let's get a quick like peek on the Docker image and image sizes, right? Um, again, back in 90s or 80s when computing was, like computing resource was at real scarcity, we kind of were very, very like careful about what code we wrote, exact line sequence we wrote to make sure our application used the least amount of memory and space. Early 2000, with the rise of Java, again, anyone who loves Java, not, not really bashing your uh, coding language choices, but I think with the idea of JVM and writing one code base that works everywhere, people started becoming more lax in terms of like being uh, empathetic to about the resource you're using. And hardware wasn't the issue, we just kept put, throwing more and more and more hardware to the problem to solve it, getting bigger and bigger data center because it became cheaper and cheaper. But with microservices again, we're going back to the similar concern. You want to have your application small, lightweight, easy to kill, easy to spin back up. We're starting to, we have to like rethink about our live decisions and how we like build our applications. Because again, if my Docker image, now let's like, on that note, let's quickly take a look at the Docker image sizes, right? So the first Docker image that I built, that was like the golden image, that was the final version of it we're gonna build. How big do you think that image is? Just randomly, it's a Go image, it's a Docker image that you see. The application does exactly the same thing. Uh, this is the good one? That's the good one. That's the, the, that's the best one? version I personally can come up with at this moment. Okay, probably like bytes. Uh, no, more. I mean, yeah, a little bit more. Megabytes. In, in 10 megabytes. megabytes. 10 megabytes. And take a guess, what's the really, really, really bad Docker image size gonna be? Probably like 300 megabytes. 300 megabytes. So 10 megabytes, 300 megabytes. We're already looking at a 30 times increase in size, right? Okay. So if I do a quick Docker images away. and grab on uh, just Mofi, the word Mofi code so that, uh, all right. So Fox from Prime, the version I wrote, it's seven megabytes. Okay, so and pretty close. Pretty, pretty close. And the other one was 1.21 gigabytes. That's, that's that, disgusting. That, yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> a size increase of over I don't even know, you have to do a like, division of 1,021 with, uh, yeah, 1,210 by seven, like eight. Wow. That's like 208, like 70 times bigger, which is Stupid. no bueno, no, not good, not good. So again, I just showed you the end result really quick, but let's slowly get there eventually, okay. instead of jumping the gun all this way in one step. So this is the end result. We want to reach seven megabytes, right? Like that is like the smallest I have personally gotten it to become. Um, but how did you get there, right? It's like, again, my Docker application does the exact same thing because that means I didn't really drop any major things that makes the application work. And I'm not just like making it up that application works. It truly does work. Right. Um, so let's let's uh, switch to another version, uh, check out another branch. Um, so I have another one called really, really bad Docker. It's not really, really, really bad, but it's really, really bad. Here, actually, show me the, the really, really, like the, the, the worst one you have. So again. this is the worst one okay. we are looking at. Um, so let me let me look at this and like see okay. if I can like kind of. So give me some suggestions what I can do to like make it a little better, given the information you had from last week. Okay, so you could probably combine a lot of these things together. Uh, the only thing I don't know is like, how much combining is too much? Like, can you just combine all of these into one? So I technically could combine all the run commands into just like cascade them with and, 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 and it will be actually just okay. No problem there. Okay. Uh, on the, so there is a, like a fine line you have, to, you have to walk where you don't, if you combine too many things into ones, it might be too confusing for our like mental barrier to understand. Right. Um, so I would assume like combining the ones that are already sort of like Mentally right. Spaced, so exactly. Okay. I think I think that's the first step we're gonna take. Um, that's number one thing. Another thing we talked about last week quite heavily. Um, we don't really see it here, um, but I don't know if you can pinpoint that right now. If you can, that's fine. Uh, one thing in Do the the security stuff. Exactly. So in Docker, if you don't decide, like if you don't put any particular user here, by default it's running as root, and we saw the dangers of running as root. I could basically just mount a volume on this and get access to the entire system. But because I'm root here, I'll be root on the entire volume on that way. No good either. Um, so these are a couple of things we could have done. But let's just take a quick look at the second version of the thing. I didn't really make too many changes. 
But I basically just like the, whatever the groups were, I just like clumped them together. Okay. Uh, I'm on this branch and do a cat Docker file. And this is the version. So all the things that are together are clumped together. Is that the only thing you changed in this one? You yeah, no, nothing else or? changed. Okay. It's the only thing that's changed. But let's just see what kind of like improvement this can do for my uh, application. So I'm going to start this. And a couple of, one other thing I just did, I suppressed uh, some of the outputs with uh, Quiet because previously it was like too many outputs. Again, outputs are necessary for your application, but you want to also like minimize on the outputs in terms of what makes sense uh, to see. Because if your Docker image is printing out like thousands of lines, the important lines you want to see, the failure messages you're probably going to not even see, right? right? Again, this is not like the most quiet version. It's still printing a lot, a lot of things. I saw the so the previous one was you had twenty two, and this one's only fifteen. Right, because again, I uh, did the merged bunch yeah. of clumps. Like for example, here I got rid of three extra run commands. Here I got rid of like three extra or six, and here I got one to so seven. So exactly fifteen to twenty two. Right. I got seven of them away, and it's still building away. Um, again, so whenever. Whenever we went from building the old one to building this one, does it reuse anything? If from it the can, one? it actually the problem is you have to look at when it became different than the previous layer. Right, and this uh, it's like literally the start. after the first yeah. line, so it no longer pulled the Ubuntu Xenial image anymore. But from this line four, second layer, it had, was completely different. Right. So the layer file system again, the union file system that Docker uses, does it check something? It doesn't really look through if it's actually real or same. Um, so it doesn't check some. If it's two commands clumped together, although it does the exact same thing, it's still a different checksum at this point. Right. So, um, which is great for speed, but not really good for like the smart things like this. Because if you if you give it to any someone after the image is built, if you give it to anyone, by looking through it, the image will look exactly the same to both person, the end result at least. But the union file system will be completely different. So the image finished building. So we just did like a couple of clumpings. What do you think would be the difference in image sizes now? Like, give me. Okay, so it started out at one point two one gigabytes. One gigabytes. Okay, can you go back to the thing real quick? The code. Oh yeah, sure. The Docker file. We did nothing other than just like doing it all. Okay. Like, so you have all these updates at the same line, and yeah. all of these downloads. Downloads, and then okay. I mean, let's again, say, let's say six hundred megabytes now. That's a huge change. Like, uh, why? Why do you think there was so much change? Because I uh, again, I feel like there's probably like stuff that gets downloaded and trashed whenever you're installing stuff. Right, but I did the trashing previously too. I actually got rid of the Docker download before then too. Right. Right, but like, don't like if you reuse it. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. So your guess is 600 megabytes. Yeah, it's probably a really bad guess, but you know, I gotta just you know give some right, right, no, of course, no, no I, context here. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna just do this. Oh, damn it. It's a slash. OK, so RRBD is actually 742 megabytes. OK, you look at me like I'm crazy with the 600. No, no, no. I mean, I, I was surprised that why did you get to that number. But again, you were pretty close. Again, just by like merging them together. So the, what's happening is when you merge layers together, um, for example, especially the delete, like uh, this particular line here, when I'm getting rid of the uh, go thing, if it is in the same command, if I delete it by the end of the command, the layer doesn't exist after the thing ends. But on the previous version of it, if I quickly check back out to really, really, really bad Docker, what happens is the file is downloaded right. on this layer. It's, it's there right. underneath. Right. Then I do what I do. I delete that on the top layer, but the bottom layer file is still there. Although I don't see it, I can no, have, no longer have access to it, but it's still occupying space. Right. So again, just by a simple thing, we saved some space. Um, Okay, so question. Whenever you say you download <coughs> something and then you keep using it in different steps, mm -hmm. does it get like, so say you have it in like four other steps, does right. the size like quadruple? No. So Docker does another thing called copy on write. So what that means is if I can use something from a lower layer without having to change anything, I will just use it. I'll just read only use it from okay. a lower layer. So if you let's say you download <laughs> something, you change a little, little bit layer by layer, layer, it will keep on copying. Yes, okay. that's also big now. You don't want to do. You want to like <laughs> like limit that as much as possible. So, so you could in theory end up with like four times the size. Of much bigger if you change something that become, for example, you right. download a file, then make a copy of like write something on the file. Right. That file keeps getting bigger. Yeah. 
So again, try to not do that as much as possible. <laughs> um, so again, so we did that. Like on the next version, I call it really okay Docker. And what I basically am trying to do here is where is really okay Docker. Uh, so really okay Docker does it actually the exact same thing, but over here I also doing something more in terms of like adding a user now. So again, the Docker file size, I don't think it's gonna, like it's gonna not get it improved on the Docker file size. But the thing it's gonna get improved on is basically um, security. Uh, security, yes. All right, so it's making a user. So it's creating a folder called the user. I'm creating a user named nobody, putting it on a group X and giving it a, like a user ID and creating a user password. That's why I actually needed the CS certificate for and just adding that into the user group, right? And finally, when I before all these other things, I actually need root permission to do do so, right? Apt get and like all the installing things, I need root permission to do. So, if, so let's say I want to add security kind of stuff to to my Docker. Can I just copy and yeah. use this? Yeah, like any any user over like like certain like number, like is actually like pretty much have no permission as a root. So this is a pretty pretty decent number. It's almost at a random number, but like it works. You can just keep using that. Because it's highly unlikely that magically this number user all, all of a sudden gonna get root access. Because each Docker image is gonna start from scratch anyway. So I just basically again this is a string I use for all my images anyway. And I found it from a different image someone else built. And it's just okay. like wait, so I'm I i do not actually really know what these numbers are at all. So again, this number is, is like just, the it, can you, you put anything there? Or yeah, like any like, number over sixty thousand would be like a like a non privileged user. What if I put just like three hundred thousand? What does that mean? I think there is a limit of how like how many users can you have on the next subsystem. Oh, so is it the amount like it's basically the ID, right? The unique ID, but like again, the ID starts from zero all the way on top to like whatever. And the ID has something to do with its privilege? I think there is like certain like ranges of IDs. Okay. It doesn't have to do with the privilege, but it's kind of like um like but like not good practice, but what what is called? Um like traditionally, okay. like these numbers represent like this user means like again the name of the user is nobody, so gotcha. kind of no. Okay, makes right. sense. Yeah. So again, in the end, before I start my application, before my, before my container actually starts, I set my user as nobody, and basically, so what happens at this point is, the my when my Docker image runs, it is running as nobody. Okay. For my application's point of view, nothing changes because my application never really needed to be root anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so again, let's quickly build this. And one thing here, though, like although this layer is where it's different, mm -hmm. so one thing I could do technically is just like move this down all the way here because I don't really need it until then. So I'm gonna quickly do that. Um, so I'm gonna just put my user creation and everything right around here. Okay. So what this means is from the previous layer, I could use a lot of these things because it only changes after here. So I'm gonna quickly build uh, this version of it. Uh, so it should be pretty. Fast and stuff, just because. Uh, yeah. So let's. Really okay. Yeah. <laughs> so so see like yeah, until. Jumped right there. Yeah, yeah. Just like bam, just build everything. Okay. That's uh, that's really cool. Yeah. One thing it did change. I think I think the problem was at layer twelve. Since my code actually changed when I copied everything over, it became a different version. So it didn't really matter that I did the user thing here, because it actually was different from this point on because my Docker file is also part of my code. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. so again, layer 12, where it changed. I built it, I can run it, just to prove that you know, I'm not lying to you in terms of like the application still is exactly the same. Ooh, hold on. Ah, okay. <laughs> Problematic. I, I Now I remember why I actually had it up there. Um, so it actually, before it exposes and everything, it has to know what the user is. Um, whew, boy, okay. Let's quickly build it, and after this, it's gonna do a bunch of things. Again, none of these things are like too big anyway, so it's gonna happen pretty fast. But again, you have to, when you are trying to start an application, the user has to be known before. That's why probably when I first initially built it, I put the user all the way up there. So it's probably like, can you go back to your Docker file? Yeah. Um, so when it's like setting Whenever up the go yeah. root and all these other things, it has to know that this group exists so that it can add like the go permissions, running the, at least the go commands behind that. Um, okay. Right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay, I think it's still finished building. Yeah, that was a lot slower then. 
Oh crap, okay. Um interesting. Alright, let me get back to that in a second. Hmm, I don't know why that was that one was failing. Um all right, let's move on to the next version. I'm going to come back to that in a second. So again, really okay Docker still does what it needs to do. Let's move on to bad Docker again. This was the, uh, oh, right. Get reset hard. Okay, go back to it and I'm going to quickly check out to bad Docker. Now, finally, in the bad Docker, what I'm doing, instead of trying to um, use like Ubuntu to install Go and everything is, in it. Is bad Docker better than really okay? Yeah, my naming is a little bit off. I initially had two versions of it, like master and bad docker. Then yesterday I actually added the other three to showcase what it means. But uh, one thing to show is uh, docker images, if I do quickly. So the really okay docker is about 700, same size, nothing changed. But a couple of things here I could do is that instead of... Uh, Okay, instead of trying to build my Docker image from Ubuntu to use a Go install and all these things, I could use one of those official Golang Docker images that has already Go installed. So it's going to save me some time from installing a bunch of things that I don't necessarily need all the time. So number one thing here is, let's say, um, so I'm installing just Git. Git is the only thing I need for Go. But other than that, I'm not installing anything. I'm not doing any app Git update or anything. I'm just using the Golang. Uh, Another thing you're seeing here, the arg argument. So you can set up like vi variables inside the Docker image. You can also pass in the argument when you're building it. So if you want to make this a little bit more dynamic when you're building the image, you can do that as well. But I'm setting the arg to 1.12. That's the current Docker Go version. I'm building the image. Everything else is pretty much the same in terms of like I'm just installing Git and nothing else. And I'm doing and on the build. I'm doing a little bit of more optimization. I'm disabling Sego, and I'm like building a static build and all the other things. Doesn't really change the size too much, uh, but it's just like like a better production level uh, Go build, if anything. Um, so with everything is there, I'm gonna just try to uh, build this, and I'm gonna call it bad Docker. And it's starting from ooh, hold on. Okay, uh, it doesn't know if 1.12 Alpine is available. Okay, let's quickly. Uh, do a little bit of troubleshooting what is the current uh, dot go build is. Uh, go official docker. Did you not even test? I Well, I tested like last month from then. <laughs> okay, hold on. Oh, that's the SDK, sorry. That's not it. Uh, tup, tup, tup. Serious? Okay. Okay. Docker library go lang. So one twelve. What is the tag on it? Uh, okay. So we're gonna use a tag from here. Hmm. So it is RC Alpine. The one twelve seven Alpine. That's the one I tried using. One twelve that I, I all time. Let's look at it again. Golang. Docker pool Golang. One twelve dash. Yeah, that's the one we are trying to use. It looks like. Let's go back to it. What was the error message? It said it uh, it couldn't find one twelve dash on time. Like at the literally the first line of it, which was interesting. Um, mm, 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 mm. Actually, let's try this. Let's do um, Alpine three point one zero, and uh, or let's do this one one twelve seven Alpine. Okay. Oh no, not not okay. Oh boy. Huh. I have to be logged in to pull that. You know what? Whatever. I'm gonna I'm gonna just get rid of the whole uh, version thing altogether. I'm just gonna pull Golang. 
and that should just get the latest anyway and I'm gonna get rid of this extra layer oh wow that's not good <laughs> okay so it, I can't even okay if I do a docker pool golang what does it do it just doesn't pull the docker image altogether okay uh, I'm just I'm gonna just log in to see if logging in makes it better. Also another advisory, do use a password manager. What is happening? I'm gonna like just go on a limb and Docker Hub might be down. Because it's not <laughs> even letting me log into Docker Hub. Uh, okay, I'm going to sign out and try signing in again. No, it did log in. Uh, okay. Yeah, so you see right here, login did not succeed. And you're from your dog, Damon. Uh, oh. Again, this particular version of the image I built last night and it did work. So something funky is happening, people. And the password is, and I know for a fact this password works. Uh, let me try logging out and logging back in from the browser to see if anything is problematic there. Sign in. Yeah. Is the CLI version having any issue? If anyone knows if something is going wrong with Docker, tell us. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut my loss and move to Ubuntu, like try that Docker CLI from there. I don't need it just yet. Um, okay, so and in the meantime, if someone has any suggestion for us, I'm gonna quickly take a look. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm having like this weird, weird error from uh, basically the Docker CLI to get access to dump pooling things. So I'm gonna try to uh, use Docker from my Ubuntu machine, Ubuntu virtual machine here. Um, other than other than, while that opens up, uh, if you have any other general purpose questions, this is this is pretty interesting. I never actually seen that happen. Before, so Nick, never. never has it happened. No, Docker usually does pretty well in terms of you know pulling stuff. Could yeah, it could be that the Golang image itself got like taken down. Uh, Can you pull any other? Yeah, that's gonna that's what I'm gonna try. Docker pull engine X. So Docker pull in general, like it's not working. It's it's. <laughs> Does logging in here work? Uh, yeah. Ah, my clipboard is not gonna work. <laughs> and if you manually type it out. It's not that many characters. You think, right? Okay, let's. That's not too bad. Come on, I've typed out like really long API uh, keys. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Jesus. Uh, yeah, I'll read it out to you. <laughs> sure. No, I think I think I got it. Um, why isn't your uh, password strength bar completely filled? Yeah. No, I think. Huh? Are you connected to the internet? Of course you are. You're on the internet. I'm streaming right now. <laughs> like, do you think I'm streaming with like willpower? No. Uh, Docker. Then I don't know. It's just the. Uh, um, oh no! So Docker down is actual. Docker compose down is an actual command in Docker. Uh, is Docker hub down? Oh yeah. Here you go. Uh, hub dot Docker down. Is it down or just me? Um, Currently up. Response time. 
I'm gonna just report an issue. I'll be the guy. <laughs> report an issue. I reported it. I don't know if it does anything, but it seems to be. How about Docker again? I didn't have an issue logging into the actual thing. Right. I was just having issue like. Is it the registry Docker? What's the? Uh... Um. The where that we're getting error message from registry one Docker IO. V two. And like this one complains that I was not authenticated, unauthorized. But I was authenticated when I tried to pull it, and I couldn't pull any Docker Hub images, which is also um, what. What if I do like a Docker pull Ubuntu from an Ubuntu machine? That's uh, that's some meta stuff. I don't know. Right. So I just it's just like complete blackout from the Docker daemon. So I'm gonna instead of like trying to bash my head around this, if something else comes up, if I figure it out, I'm gonna like post it in the show notes later. But Let's just like you know, uh, take my word for it. I tested it last night. It did of work. Course, of course. Uh, if you were to build this Docker image using this particular Docker um, file, the image size is going to be around 400 megabytes. But again, our final Docker image that we built was, if you remember, seven. Seven. Like, how do I finally get there? That's yeah. that's like such a magical number. So from Docker 18, we had this new uh, idea that's called multi-stage build. And I'm, fami I'm, I'm sure I have told you this before. I think we have done that for your Docker image as well. But for, for those of us who, who are like just learning for the first time, multi-stage build is like magical unicorn that solves like 80% of all Docker's problem. <laughs> so what multi-stage build basically does is that you build your image, whatever uh, image you want to build, whatever uh, artifacts you want to build in the layer that you don't really care for, then copy just the build binaries or the artifacts or the war files or year files or <laughs> Now Siri is like getting all, uh, <laughs> she wants to say something. Um, so you take your war files and every, every, all those files and just copy to a new layer, of new image altogether. And that is the image that you actually push out and give it to people and run as an uh, uh, actual container. So what that means is for our point of view in this like a Go application, only thing I care for, because Go builds out a binary, I just need a Linux environment that can run binary. I don't need Git. I don't need SSH. I don't need like CS certificates. I'm just gonna have my user set up there, and I'm just gonna copy this binary that like uh, Go builds. Okay. So my question is, why build it in Docker? Why not just build it and then just copy the build into Docker? So is it just you have like a, a a stable build environment. That? That's one thing. Number two is you are most likely not gonna want to like build Docker manually by typing this in. I mean, you could just like make like a build script or something similar to the. Docker. Right, you could but definitely, then, yeah, de definitely, but like we'll have it in Docker. right, and if you have it in Docker, there's a couple of things you could do, in terms of like you can take the entire Docker script, you can actually make it part of your uh, like a uh, checked in code, and Travis or Jenkins can take that code and do everything because Travis has Docker integration into, into it, right? Right. So it just like makes. If you write a shell script, it's not portable. It's not. It's not scalable. You can really Docker file. I can just keep copying the same Docker file for all my Golan builds, gotcha. right? Yeah. So let's uh, take a look at what the final version of this looks, and it's going to look extremely similar to what we're looking at right now. Uh, oh man, I'm going to have to also. Uh, get reset hard. I'm going to just like reset. I, I love Git resetting hard. This is like the best. And <laughs> Git has to offer. Um, again, so one thing you're gonna see up to up to this point, we're building the application. Everything looks just same. And another thing we have probably seen different is as something. So you starting from a base image as something else. So what at building something as something means is once the image is built, it's gonna give it a name builder, and from the same Docker file, you can actually uh, out of the builder. So on that, after we finish building, we start from scratch. And scratch is a uh, Linux runtime. It has literally almost nothing in it. You can't SSH into a scratch image. It has nothing installed to, in, into it. All it can do is a Linux environment that can run your binary files. So with that, what we will do is from our builder, we'll just copy the user group, copy the user password, copy the HC folder. We'll need those. We'll copy from the builder the app from the builder, expose that, set up the user, and just run the application. And when you build this image, it's going to build two Docker images. One of them is going to be your actual image that you wanted to build. The other one is going to be tagged with none. Basically, you can delete it where you built it and just get rid of it. 
that none image is going to be still really big. It's going to be like 400 megabytes. But once you get the scratch, that's the final image you get as a user. It's going to be like the 7 megabyte size. And I'm pretty sure this is still not going to work because if I try to do um, <laughs> that, it's going to fail. Um, but again, you know, it's going to be it's off now. Oh, boy. Uh, I, I, sorry. I'm, yeah. <laughs> So it was just like down for like a couple of minutes and it just like back up. I don't know. I don't know. Co fine. Computers are fun that way sometimes. Uh, and I don't know. Uh, Docker, pool, go in. Here you go, folks. Uh, I have solved uh, Docker Hub problems for all of you. You're welcome. <laughs> no, I think it was just like down for maintenance or something. I mean, it's it's weird they're doing a maintenance at 1.30. <laughs> I mean, unless their data centers are in Japan, it's like midnight. They're like, it's time. We're gonna do it now. <laughs> um, yeah. So again, this is this is gonna do whatever it needs to do, and it's gonna build. It's doing some build. It's gonna do some. Then it's gonna go to the next level. We're gonna just quickly see what the size of it looks like. Um, once it's finished building. Step nine. It's taken a while. Yeah. No, I think it is. But again, once it's done, now we're at a new layer, like scratch. But if I do a Docker images now, you're gonna see something really funky. Is that you see this this thing right here? See that size right there? It's still 400 megabytes. Right. That was the original image size would have been. Then I just copied the things over, and we ended up with a 7.8 megabyte image, which is ideal uh, for our use case. And we have to do. And I hope it runs. I think my Docker image ends up only being around like. 300 megabytes, maybe, which isn't, which isn't too bad. bad. I mean, for, for, for like Node, Node, right? For Node, you have, because you have whole Node modules happening. And I'm not like trashing everything. So. Right, 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 right. Uh, so the application probably still does run. Uh, I mean, hoping. So it does run, right? And we're back to the, the ideal seven, ten, less than 10 megabyte Docker image sizes that we wanted to get to. So again, it does uh, what it does. And this is actually part of like a bigger application uh, that does other things, that has UI element. Now, one thing I wanted to show you, so this is like we're in the master, we're in the, like, the ideal world where Docker image sizes are really small. But let's go take a look at the UI element where I actually have Node and what can I do when I have like UI Node being built at the same time as my Docker, uh, as my Go code. Uh, so it's going to be UI. OK. So and I don't really have to do it here. I'm going to quickly just. So with the, um, the build stuff, right, mm -hmm. um, whenever you scrap all the other stuff and you go to the new thing. If if so let's say like you're a really, really bad Docker that was like one point whatever. Two one gigabytes. Yeah. So if you did that and then just copied the necessary stuff into scratch, would the end result still be seven megabytes, yes. but then you would have like a gigabyte of it, like just sitting there. Okay. That we could solve with the like a script pretty easily. Just after you're done, just find right. that image and get rid of it. Okay. But even then, right, you want to even with like the image layers you're going to get rid of, you still want to be considered. Because again, this is probably not running on your Mac on the server. Because your Mac has 16 gigs of RAM, uh, right. 500 gigabytes of SSD storage. But on the server, on the Kubernetes, if you're trying to build this application. No, it, I mean, like, one gigabyte is like pretty crazy. I guess. Right. Yeah. Like, then you're paying for each <laughs> node you're getting. So like, yeah. you, don't, you want to be super, as considered as possible. And if you pull something, if your application like for example, if your Docker image was 1.21 gigabyte and you put it in a container, like a manifest, like deployment, and you tried three copies of it, and you said always pull image, the first time you ran this application is gonna probably take like six minutes because it's trying to download a gigabyte size of Docker image for just running a pod, right? Again, we're just kind of like jumping ahead in the Kubernetes world, but like that's what you have to think about when you're building right. these applications. Goals. Right. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag goals. Um, so. Another thing you're going to see here, so now up to, up until this point, for this this particular one is the UI, it has node applic node built into this. There's a front end folder, it does things. So up until this point right here, you're going to see that my application is pretty much the same. My Docker file is pretty much the same. I have one uh, from Golang as builder. And then you're going to see that I have another from. It's called as build dependencies, like build apps. And node, I'm starting from node. I'm setting my work directory. I'm copying everything I can. I, I have to. Then I'm doing a yarn build, right? Then I go to my final scratch, and then I copy from builder. I copy what I need to copy from build apps. I need to, I copy the, just the build folder, 
And with all that, my scratch only has the like static build folder, and it has the um, it has what? Oh, it has that like the previous like a go build, right? So let's try building this. It has two pre pre stage and one final stage. What the size looks like uh, on this one? So with this Docker build, uh, Foxfan UI master. Again, a couple of things you're going to notice that first few steps was like this, because again, it can use a previous application, all this different application. Uh, from the copying, the Go mod started becoming different, so it just like slowed down a little bit. But this one has quite a lot of numbers of layers. It has 22 layers. It has some node copying, node stuff into it as well. So all in all, this might be a little bit bigger, like much bigger than 7.8 megabytes, but it's still much, much smaller than that 1.21 gigabyte that we initially got. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna let it like so again. This is the, this is the first time it's downloading the node Docker image as well. Um, so is um, is your node is it serving anything or is it just it's just there to generating build static? the static okay. uh, pages again? Node is not my backend language. Go is it just takes a static build node and just serves that those files. Cool, cool. Yeah, and again, it's downloading decently fast. I, I must say, uh, considering that we're also streaming right now. Um, but if it's in a server, right, a server has sometimes a gigabit connection, so you can pretty much get these things built much faster. But the point is, you shouldn't like only rely on having fast internet for these things to be faster. You also want to be considerate how much space it takes, and it's just like doing a bunch of other things. Uh, again, I will. Um, I haven't built this particular Docker image in about two months until I ran the workshop last. So something breaks, it's it's still my fault, but again. I just wanted to show you the size difference. Don't really Yeah. 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 So why why is this one gonna be bigger? Because I'm not only copying the binary, I'm also copying the static build that node produced, and those files just take space. Uh, also if I do a, like a Docker images, you're gonna see I have two non images built because I have like two stages that I don't really use. Right. So it, it produces more garbage basically. Gotcha. But like Docker multi-stage build, was, it's such a game changer. It's it's people were doing all sorts of funky things to get like smaller Docker images. Like the thing you said, like build the binary yourself and push it in. Another problem you That's might. That's what I was originally doing. Um, right. Yeah. Um, one of the problem you might face with that is like Go is pretty good with this. In Go, you can actually build a binary for a Linux environment from uh, like a. Mac OS because Go build is like the best thing since sliced bread, um, but not all things are really good at those kind of things. So you might have to like do funky things like go into a VM that is your, your Docker is gonna be built there. Again, you want to minimize the cognitive overhead as much as possible from your end. But everything is Docker; it just like does things. And again, Node gives me a lot of these red lines. I don't know enough Node <laughs> or JavaScript to know or care. You have unmet peer dependencies. Well, the application always, never never always. application never broke, so I'm not gonna complain. So if I do a Docker images and if I type properly today, uh, you're gonna see I have a couple of none that, as I said, I have one, the node one, one point two one, and with yeah, it's not that much bigger. It's eight megabytes. I mean, it's a megabyte bigger. Again, I'm, it's 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 like ten percent increase in size. Yeah. Right. I, I, I again. It's, it's change on the 1.2 gigabytes, though. It's improvement. It's, it's, it's improvement. It's, it's, it's a droplet in the ocean. Um, again, so with all that, right, I think we're in a pretty good spot to uh, stop for today. We almost reached 50 minutes. Yeah. And we also solved like, the Docker Hub issues. Uh, we fixed Docker Hub. Um, so. yeah. But if you have any more questions regarding this, like, like what is, ooh. Ah, so a couple of uh, our viewers, thank you so much, Ice Cream Sandwich, great, great username, by the way. <laughs> so he saw reports of Docker Hub uh, being done, and it looks like it's back up now. All, all my commands are going through again. It was probably down for like five minutes, and it's such a, like, a, in my, like, using Docker for like almost a year, and I have never seen Docker Hub being down. It's like, it just had to happen the day I was showing Docker Hub. But it, again, <laughs> it, it's in record now. Docker Hub can deny that their site went down. It's yeah. in video. It's going to be a, a live somewhere. <laughs> um, and also, uh, 
Enelu Shimba. So you're new to Docker thing. What does it exactly do? So a quickly answer what does Docker do? Docker takes your application, packages it, and makes it something you can just take it anywhere that has a Docker engine and run it. It's kind of like the ideal promise Java made, write once, run anywhere. It's kind of like the write once, package it once, run anywhere. Kind of like added an extra step, but made it, in my opinion, more portable because it's not only for Java and bytecode, it's for any language that you can package. And you can like, like, and in the end of the day, uh, is Docker doesn't also have to be have a Docker engine. Like Docker uses containerd underneath, runs underneath. So it also very, uh, it almost like a API specification. So anything that satisfies the Docker image needs will be able to run it. Eventually, it will be more and more flexible with those, and it will be get much, much better. Um, so thanks for joining, everyone. I think this Nick, if you have any more questions, uh, I think I'm good. Um... Yeah. So uh, next week, I think I'm traveling, but we'll try to figure out what you do with your uh, AI stream. I'm really excited because last week we almost got to the point where I was like about to write it like AI thing. Uh, yeah, but we're almost there. Almost there. So so, so like I can almost taste the AI happening, yeah. um, and hopefully I'll I'll do something bigger than temperature. <laughs> hopefully soon, uh, and also next next week I think we're almost at the point where we're gonna. Uh, so Dockerfile, we have pretty good understanding, but we have to just see what are the other like kind of edge cases of Docker in terms of like uh, volume mounting, secrets, environment variable, all these other things, which is gonna be fun. Fancy. Yeah, that's gonna be again next week. I think it's gonna be pretty small, but then after that, I think we're gonna just like put a hold on Docker. We know enough Docker to be dangerous. We're gonna move into Kubernetes. We're gonna start with like local Kubernetes and all sorts of fun stuff. Eventually, move to cloud. Uh, so I'm super excited about all that uh, and. So Nick, if you have any final words, with that we're gonna finish. No, yeah. Come learn AI next week. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Also, Chris, and thank you for joining. And really, really, uh, this this particular, I felt like I personally like got to show you a lot of this. Yeah, I think I think I definitely learned a lot. Before I was like skeptical. I was like, it's not gonna make that much of a difference. Right. Like, but like please, but, seven you know, point gigabytes. Seven. Of like, a it, okay. like definitely. The, okay. Yeah. The difference between seven point eight nine megabyte and one point two one gigabyte is probably one point two one gigabyte. Like that's how big the difference is. So thank you so much for joining. And this video is gonna be up on YouTube. So find us there. We're uh, youtubecom c slash movicos. That's the channel. Um, so we have a bunch of other videos on Docker, and we have a bunch of other videos on AI. Nick is amazing at AI stuff. And hopefully, I'll actually upload the, the previous, previous one. Previous one, yeah. Previous. Which we haven't done that yet. But, yeah. Uh, so again, the Docker, and eventually the goal is Nick is gonna keep progressing. We're gonna get into other more advanced AI things. I don't even know the how to pronounce the names of. Nick is gonna tell <laughs> us more about. And even with the Docker stuff, we're gonna move on to like more cloud native things. And with the acquisition of Red Hat, we have a bunch of other new things that are coming up that we're going to be able to talk about. OpenShift, Ansible, all the cool things that are coming up. We're going to actually have sessions. And we're going to actually start having uh, guest lectures. We're going to start pulling in people that are experts in their field and knows a lot more than like <laughs> me in many of these things. And I'm going to have them share the knowledge with you guys. So with that, I'm going to end this stream here today. Thank you so much. And I'm going to just like get our face on the thing real quick. Ooh, there you go. So thank you so much for coming and joining us. Find this video on YouTube later. Uh, do, a sub do a quick subscription to us. Uh, share it with your friends if, if, if you think they're going to enjoy this as well. So with that, I end this. Have a good day. <laughs>